what happened on that playground. In less than two seconds and from four to seven feet away, New questions Loman in the Breonna fired. Taylor case, which has been sparking protests across the country. But no bystander heard that or any warning before the shots. The politics surrounding, you know, Brianna's um, death are are better fought in the streets. They're literally just Does anyone have more milk? I do. I do. My whole face is like burning. We was peacefully protesting. Somebody, we was kneeling, and uh, they started to come up, and they got aggressive because we was kneeling. So what I was much more interested in doing was finding a way to to walk that line because regardless it will be a political piece it's all we have i think it's the thing that that everyone tries to take away from us historically people have tried to take away um, and have taken away you know our homes our lives our livelihoods our our future and all we've really had to cling on to is our dignity, not even to prove that we're not these, you know, like savages that we get painted as, but to remind everyone. I think black dignity to me is like, is a, is a path of self-discovery. This thing that we all have, that we all deserve and that we all need to share, something that we can't run from, something that we have to, to walk down towards and try to bring as many people along as we can. Black Lives Matter is not a response to extrajudicial violence. It's a response to an inadequate, inept, racist um, execution of law in regards to the loss of black life. If you want to kill me over here and I want to live over here, I'm not building a bridge where we meet in the middle. I will make culture here. And you can use that as a bridge to come over here where I'm alive. I want my son to live. I have to say I was, um, I, I'm inspired by um, Brian Stevenson and the EJI and um, their efforts um, through their museum in Montgomery, Alabama to mark um, life and death, to mark lynching and the history of lynching, to map it to give it symbol. And thinking about how important maps have been in African-American culture, um, in diasporic culture, period, but in African-American culture, and how it is that um, we use maps as connective tissue to mark pathways to freedom to um, kind of delineate ourselves in space. Even um, graffiti tags, let alone hieroglyphics, as delineations of our presence in space. Um, so I, I don't know, those are some of the things that were on my mind um, when I first um, conceived of the cartography um, project. Cartography came about through really an amazing synthesis of so many different aspects and groups within the Kennedy Center. It was led by the wonderful Bamuthi, who brought us together with the idea of mapping, in a way, across America, social injustices. After George Floyd was killed and 
Mark Bamuti Joseph came to us with this idea of the cartography project, it was uh, an extraordinary opportunity uh, to do both things, to, to serve our community, in, in this case really our national community, uh, and to, to meet a need that um, I think is probably the most urgent need uh, in our culture today, but then also to serve the art form uh, by helping to change the art form. And then of course we all look back to the summer of, of 2020, which I think was a watershed moment for, for the country and, and the world, and, and seeing what happened and, and the, the rise of Black Lives Matter and the response, the public response, I think uh, the National Symphony and the broader Kennedy Center was asking itself, you know, what, what role can we play in, in trying to address this, this issue. And From its inception, it was about working alongside people who experienced the same thing we all experienced, uh, but a little bit more intimately to create a piece that was collective. You know, opera is uh, just the combination of words and music to tell a story. Uh, but in these times, rightly, we're asking ourselves, well, which story? Uh, and, and who is telling it? Well, I think the inclusion of these composers and, and, and librettists, it, it shows that there are many different stories uh, in the African-American experience. So the prompt was to the NSO, the prompt was to the WNO, and the prompt eventually was to these composers and to these librettists. Commissioning several composers uh, and librettists, and they tell a different story. Each one of them are telling a different story in a different way, in a, a very unique way. To um, consider the loss of life and the character of loss of life, but also to consider dignity and meaning. Um, how do we musically make meaning out of black dignity? That really is the question. Mostly what I wanted to do was to work with the NSO and the WNO in a way that forced them to wrestle with the questions the way that I was wrestling with them. No justice! No justice! No justice! No justice! No justice! No justice! Hands up! You know, I lived um, really close to St. Louis when um, was the Michael Brown killings went, and then the riots happened. And you know, like being nearby, I was like concerned. You don't get to see it really until it happens in your city. We're living in Louisville. I remember the day it happened. I remember before mainstream news picked it up, I remember seeing something. I remember hearing a story that sounded too ridiculous to be true. You know, fast forward four months, hearing helicopters over my, over my apartment, enforcing a, day, a nightly curfew. Um, you know, like, it was a little unbelievable. On top of that, I had to look and see this woman who was almost exactly my age, who was just trying to live her life. I saw her face everywhere, and in her face I saw myself absolutely terrifying. It is still dark at the bleeding edge of the only island she's ever known.